As far as the effect of oral finasteride and beard growth is concerned, I have some personal experience to share with you all. Many times I receive queries from patients that once they start oral finasteride, their beard growth gets retarded and the beard appears scanty. So this is the topic of the day and since I have personal experience to share, because during the first lockdown, I decided to grow my beard and due to circumstances, I had to stop use of oral finasteride. Though earlier too, I have grown full beards, but at that time I was on oral finasteride. But this is a time when I grew my beard for a longer period of time and realized that after I stopped using finasteride and three months later, the quality of hair that I got on my beard was far, far better. In my practice, I have experienced that the response of oral finasteride on your beard growth is different for different people. Well, people have different genetics, their metabolism is different, and the effect of finasteride on their body is variable. Since most people sport a shaven look, there does not exist much scientific data or much clinical experience on the effect of oral finasteride on beard growth. So whenever a patient comes to a clinic and reports scanty growth of the beard after starting oral finasteride, his query is taken casually and it is not given the due thought, the due concern which it deserves. And his complaint is considered merely anecdotal. But since, because of the nature of a practice, the location of the practice, the geographical area and the religious denomination, that is Sikhism, in the part of the world that I practice in, most people sport a beard. And as you all know, most of my patients also take finasteride. So I have over the years gathered precious material as regards the effect of oral finasteride on the growth and development of the beard. And this is what I'm sharing with you today. Well, you might say that this is not a big concern because most people do not wear a beard. But for those people who do, it does make a lot of difference. And why do people keep a beard? It could be because of socio-cultural reasons or religious reasons. A beard can be kept to enhance facial features, to look macho, to balance certain facial features like a big nose, to hide an aging neck. Well, if you have turkey gobbler lines, that vertical lines, a beard would easily hide them. And a beard also hides a double chin. You might want to grow a beard to complement the new monster of a bike that you just bought. Also, people grow beards to take away the attention from their thinning scalp hair. This is called compensating for thinning hair and owning up what makes you unique. So when we talk of lush, exuberant beards, high levels of DHT come to our mind. DHT, as we all know, is the byproduct of testosterone. Though DHT is mired in controversy as far as the hair loss domain is concerned, it has certain unique functions which are very important to the human body, like development of muscle mass, fertility and a host of other functions that we have discussed in another video. Not everyone reacts to DHT in a similar manner. How DHT in a particular body behaves is not that cut and dry. This is where genetics comes into play. How your body reacts to DHT determines the impact of DHT on your hair growth, including beard hair. This is highlighted by the fact that everybody on finasteride has a different tale to tell. However, people with high testosterone, high DHT levels may not, on the contrary, have lush beards. This is where genetics has a role to play. Now listen to this carefully. Scalp hair growth is not DHT dependent. Whereas beard hair growth is. Scalp hair loss is DHT dependent, but beard hair loss isn't. What a paradox, you might say. How ironical, confounding and distressing for the patient who is researching hair loss, beard growth, and seeking a remedy for his hair loss pattern. And this makes him pull his hair and we can't blame him for it. In sheer disgust with medical science. Well, medical science, as far as hair loss is concerned, is not rocket science. There are a lot of gray areas as far as hair loss science is concerned. Scalp hair appear in infancy, whereas body hair take time to appear. Body hair, especially beard hair, chest hair, armpit hair, groin hair, appear at the time of puberty. This is a function of DHT. DHT is responsible for bringing forth changes in the body which are referred to as secondary sexual characteristics like a deep voice, like a prominent Adam's apple, a receding hairline, 
beard hair growth, chest hair growth, and hair growth in other bodily areas, and a host of other functions which are unique to DHT and are important for bodily function. And since scalp hair are not DHT dependent, in those who are susceptible to male pattern baldness, DHT has a deleterious effect on scalp hair. Scalp hair are morphologically, genetically, and phylogenetically dissimilar to body hair. The evolutionary development of body hair is not in consonance with that of the scalp. So here is what makes things get interesting. DHT impacts scalp hair and beard hair differently. This is called as the androgen or the THT paradox. We have all seen people with beastly Harley Davidson beards wearing a cap to cover the head. Well, this is a very common occurrence. Well, the reason is DHT, DHT and DHT susceptibility alone. For beards need DHT to achieve their full potential of growth. But on the other hand, lower sensitivity of beard follicles to DHT might not allow this to happen. This is why the effect of finasteride on beard hair growth is considered to be anecdotal. So DHT is said not to have the same effect universally on balding men with beards. However, it is commonly seen that men with high testosterone levels and high DHT levels have more facial hair. And if the body is overly susceptible to DHT, beard growth can happen at an early age. If you remember in school, even in eighth grade, we had one or two children, one or two classmates who had early onset of beard growth. Well, this is the reason the susceptibility of beard follicles to DHT at an early age. So before I conclude, there are certain take home points, take home points to mull over as regards the effect of oral finasteride on beard hair growth. Firstly, that DHT affects only linear growth of beard hair. It does not in any way affect beard hair density. So if you're an oral finasteride, it may be that the speed of growth of hair is decreased, but there will be no patchiness. Patchiness cannot be blamed on oral finasteride because finasteride does not decrease the density of hair. Secondly, finasteride does not affect 100% of DHT in the body. It only affects about 73 to 75%. This is why all people who are taking oral finasteride and who sport a beard do not report retardation of beard growth after starting oral finasteride. Thirdly, there is lack of clinical evidence because most people who are taking oral finasteride lack a beard. They wear a clean shaven look. Dutastride that blocks over 95% of DHT is more linked to lesser beard hair growth after starting the drug than finasteride is. Though finasteride blocks only type 2 and type 3 isoenzymes of 5-alpha reductase, dutasterides blocks all three. Now it is the type 1 isoenzyme of 5-alpha reductase that is responsible for beard hair growth. Since dutasteride blocks type 1 isoenzyme, it is more easily incriminated in retardation of beard hair growth once a patient is initiated on dutasteride rather than on finasteride. More 5-alpha reductase activity has been seen in certain scientific studies in beard hair as compared to scalp hair. Also, androgen receptors are more in number in beard papilla cells than in scalp papilla cells. Therefore, it is intuitive to think that beard papilla cells are more sensitive to the effect of DHT than our scalp papilla cells. And lastly, though increased anaerobic exercises in the gym in those who are susceptible to baldness is a harbinger of hair fall, hair loss, and androgenetic alopecia. The same exercises, the same anaerobic exercises will cause a lush beard to appear. And so is the case of whey protein, which is a huge no-no for androgenetic alopecia. But whey protein causes increased beard growth. It is so contradicting. There is huge paradox as far as DHT is concerned, its effect on different hair in the body. So would you trade your head hair for your beard hair? Well, that is for you to decide. For me, I would rather have both. And for those of you who are still skeptical about the effect of oral finasteride on beard, they just merely have to watch those YouTubers who extol endlessly the virtues of finasteride on the channels, claiming they've been taking finasteride for 15, 20, 25 years. The lack of beard hair in these YouTubers is an evidence that oral finasteride does affect beard hair growth. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, please put them in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed, I request you to subscribe to my channel. 
We deal with all issues related to hair loss and hair transplant. Thank you and God bless you.